Welcome to Reforming Slavics. Today we'll be talking about head coverings, and the primary text is going to be from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. If you are interested, you'll feel free to read that chapter, but we're going to be talking about head coverings, and the assumption most people make is when you say head coverings, they're like, oh, women. But if you read the text, it's like, Paul doesn't only address women, he addresses men as well. Yeah. So it's, it's just a as applicable to men as it is to women. And we were just talking about a couple of things in regards to uh, head coverings and the application of them. If it's like a transcultural thing and the reason for it, the reason for head coverings. And the first thing, the ob- let's say that there's an objection to head coverings. A big objection that a lot of people derive and state, and this is very popular, is that, hey, head coverings were a cultural issue that Paul addressed specifically to the Corinthians because they were a Roman port city in which a lot of um, shenanigans went on in regards to sexual immorality, prostitution, and whatever else comes with port cities. And uh, prostitutes in Corinth would present or advertise through the fact of having either shorn hair, short hair, or the hair would be uncovered. And that would be like the advertisement for um, them being, hey, I'm a prostitute, that's my business. And the reason we don't have to do that today is because, well, that's not the sign that people who are licentious or have immoral um, sexual jobs do. Like, that's not how they advertise. And that's kind of the encompassing argument people say. And because that's no longer applicable, then Paul's application of the head coverings are not really necessary. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the principle that's provided for the reason that Paul states. Now, you notice that Paul writes no such thing in Corinthians. Paul doesn't say, hey, this is the reason why you guys should wear head coverings or this is the why this is the reason why you shouldn't. What Paul says is The reason for head coverings is nature itself. And when he says nature itself, he doesn't refer to some naturalistic, you know, no God in the world kind of development of biology. When he says he uses nature, he uses the very reason God created man and woman. And a representation of femininity or the feminine is long hair. Mm -hmm. And the representation of masculine is, well, the opposite of long hair, which would be shorter hair. And... On top of that, Paul says, this principle is not rooted in some kind of tradition or cultural context of Corinth. This primary is ingrained in the order and the hierarchy of creation where a woman is submitted to her husband and the glory of woman is her husband and the glory of man is God himself. And so we were just speaking about the fact that, you know, where is the principle and how it's applied today? Obviously, coming from Russian church, um, head coverings, are, well, Russian, Slavic, right, Ukrainian, the East European, even in Romania, and, and East European primary Pentecostal churches do practice um, the head covering idea. That That is just applicable for women. But also... In the Russian community and in the Slavic community, it's applicable to men as well, right? You don't pray or prophesy or preach with your head covered. It's, in fact, uh, people take it even further culturally in the Slavic community where if you walk into a house, you remove your hat. If you sit down at a table to eat, you remove your hat. It's very improper, just culturally speaking, in the Slavic community for men to have a hat indoors. And obviously that's been done away with through, you know, the Americanization and the cultural melting pot here in the United States. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, a lot of people like there's a few different views that people have for this today. Like does this, is this text like applicable for us today? Uh, Some would say, no, there's no uh, applicability to us today at all. Like uh, for example, Paul is just speaking about a tradition, you know, that has been handed down to us. And then, you know, we need to barely, like really, really not consider this text. Another view is like that the head covering uh, that Paul is actually talking about is like right here is hair. Yeah. So yeah, there are multiple. Well, let's 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 look at this. Um, before we do application, let's ask 
what does Paul mean by head covering? What is the actual covering itself? And a very um, dicey verse, right? A verse that causes a lot of, ooh, what does that mean? Is when Paul says, um, you know, a woman's long hair is for a covering. I can read it. Uh, Verse 14. Does even nature itself not teach you that if a man has long hair, it is is a dishonor to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory for her. For her hair is given to her as a covering, right? But if anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice. For we, nor do the churches of God. So when he says, nor do the churches of God, he, he includes a larger context than just Corinth. And people grab onto that verse for her hair is as a, for her as a covering or for a covering. People say, well, that meant that Paul meant the actual long hair of a woman is the actual covering. And therefore there is no need for cloth covering. Uh, that is a position. I would disagree with it for a couple of reasons. I think, I don't know what position you hold, Tom. You would agree with that, right? I mean, yeah, I- I would say that the head covering is is a meaningful uh, a symbol that was in the ancient world as a as a way that sort of that sort of corresponds with today, but not not necessarily like a head covering. Okay. Yeah. So. Um. Speaking about the head covering part, you know, talking about like the hair, um, right? I feel like this passage kind of speaks to more like of a general principle of talking about men and women's roles and and the sign of authority. So, I so the principle I think we both agree on. The principle is that when God speaks to the Corinthians through Paul. He specifically says that even nature itself teaches us that there is some unique aspect of femininity about women and long hair, and there's some unique masculine traits about men. But then he further on and set goes further on and says that a woman has a symbol of authority. Verse ten, right? Therefore, a woman should have a symbol of authority over her head, because of the angels. However, in the Lord there is neither woman independent of man nor man independent of woman um and so it kind of discusses the gender roles and the applicability of them but also paul says that for man should not have his head covered since he is the image and the glory of god but a woman is the glory of man Mm -hmm. and in that he hearkens back to creation by saying like god created adam first and then from adam the woman was taken and so there's this hierarchy in the creation order where in worship, the man is, God, glory is God, the glory of God is man, and the glory of man is woman. There's an order there. And the necessity derives from the showing it in some way. And so the question would be, how do you show it today? How would a woman in the 21st century in the United States show that she is submissive to her husband in a public view, in the corporate worship? Mm-hmm. Would you say that it's long hair? Yeah. How long and how short? I think just as a general principle. as a, In the same way, like, John Piper kind of explains how if he would come to his church to ready to preach and he comes with high heels, huge hoop earrings, and lipstick, and tights, uh... His congregation would say to him, and his elders would say to him, "What are you doing? What you're doing is improper. Uh, like it goes against your nature to dress this way." In the kind of in the context of, does it even nature show you to not have, you know, for for a woman for it shows that a woman has long hair. Okay, so it's more of a practical principle that's. Um a symbol of femininity and masculinity, right? Women can have shorter hair, but if there was a congregation that had, that had a a group of men that only had long hair and the group of women only had short or bald heads, 
right? If you went in a congregation, all the women had bald heads and all the men had long hair, mm-hmm. you would be just as a uh, general reaction, be confused. Um, but appalled, appalled. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be it'd be strange. It would not be according to nature, right? Just as a general principle. Yeah, it's. I mean, a, it just in general, you know, men usually have a high, much higher percentage of of uh, matter uh, male pattern baldness. Yeah, but even example. on that, like just genetically, <laughs> women's hair grows faster or longer, right? Men's hair tends to grow faster at a certain point. But once it hits a certain point, it just stops growing all that that fast. And women tend to have a f- easier way of you know, time of growing longer hair. Mm-hmm. But uh, another question would come up: is what is the sign of what is the sign today of m- women or men's covering? Because Paul doesn't only speak of women, and everyone focuses on like the women aspect of it. But Paul clearly says it is shameful for a man to prophesy or preach with his head covered. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? What's the application today for that? Didn't in the Jewish culture though, like men pray with their with like their heads covered? Not necessarily. Um, in the Roman culture, both men and women prophesied and prayed in their pagan wor- rituals with their heads covered. It was essentially just you know how men and women, a lot of men wore togas. They were long dress like. Um, attire and so what a man would do when he came into worship service and he would perform some kind of ritual sacrifice or some kind of pagan prophecy or prayer he would just slip that toga over his head for a brief time as he did the uh, the ritual and he'd um, put it back but as a general rule most women did have a head covering in and yeah. in, in, it was just a common cultural thing that most women had their head coverings during in the middle east or even in the roman times well, yeah, that's what I have read that, for example, this commentary, it's like, it was a custom both among Greeks and Romans, among the Jews, an express law that no woman should be seen abroad without a veil that was and is a common custom through all the East and not and none but public prostitutes go without veils. Yeah, but for the men, Greek men looked at the Romans as very strange for covering their heads. Versus the Romans were that's that was part of the custom of rituals for men to cover their heads, and so in the Christian Church, Paul clearly says that men shouldn't have their hair or their head covered. How would you make the application today in modern time? Do you think it's a hat for modern men today that or there's there shouldn't be a head covering or some kind of veil on top of the man's head? In other words, can men in the modern church today, preach, prophesy, and pray with the hat on, according to Romans 11. If you apply to Romans 11, not Romans, Corinthians 11, today to men, can they preach, pray, and prophesy with their head covered? What would your answer be? Well, what if that is talking about an authority, like a symbol of authority? It is talking about a symbol of authority. I agree with you on that. But what's the practical application That's that, where we get, you know, into into dicey territory. Well, yeah. If, so, because if, if you man, if you say if you say a man can, then you automatically acknowledge that the covering itself was not the hair; it was an actual physical cloth covering, right? Mm-hmm. But if you say it's not, then you should, by principle allow men to pray, prophesy, and preach with the hat on in the congregational setting. It's interesting, though, like... I think I culturally... Feel like, you know, like the Pharisees and stuff, didn't they have their head covers, head covered? I believe when so. When they prayed? Yes. So, But you said that Jewish people didn't have their head covered. No, the principle that Paul's applying here is is specifically from the Roman culture because because these the, the Corinthians weren't Jewish. That's why I said that. They were Romans. And so they took the practices the Romans had where men would cover their heads in regards to worship. Yeah. And so... But, but didn't you make the argument that it doesn't... Like the culture, what was going on... I don't think... I don't think... That it, it doesn't matter? I don't think it matters in the sense that Paul is 
using the specific principle for that culture only. But I think some of the cultural things, he, he's using the cultural things in order to make a bigger purpose, a bigger principle. And yeah. he's, he's saying, you see all these people around in the way they worship. They, they, in, in the way the pagans worship, they have both men and women cover their heads as a sign of authority over them. But in your worship, men should not cover their heads and women should as a sign of authority to the woman and to the man. You guys have different structures there. Because there's a different mandate from creation in regards to gender roles, and so when oh, so even 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 Hebrew people, I, I mean Paul, you know, if I have to make the argument consistently, I would say that even in churches where it was predominantly Jewish, the men who prayed, prophesied, and taught would have to have their head uncovered, and the men and the women who had their head covered would have their head covered, obviously. And people say, well, what about the yarmulke, right? The, the the hat is that the is that the yeah, yeah. the hat that Jewish men wear today, it's like that was not a development back then. That yeah. has not it, it, that was a way later development for Jewish people, like way down the road. Well, but from what I read, it just that Jewish men did have their heads covered while praying. And I would say not in the Christian church they didn't. Yeah, because again, but th- do you think he could be making application? Paul is like, uh, Paul is saying talking to Christians that came from a Jewish culture, it's like even those men covered their heads. So why won't why won't a woman even cover her head while she's praying? I I, I don't I think I think we have to separate the gender the, the, the sexes, right? Men have this specific um, direction from Paul according to worship. And women have this specific direction from Paul from worship. And it has nothing to do Outside of worship, meaning once a woman goes out of the worship service, the corporate worship service, there was no more prophesying and praying corporately, that principle doesn't apply. So if you're play, praying in your house, there's no necessity for head covering. If you're preaching, you know, in the congregation, then then, then that principle applies. And a lot of people get caught up in the uh, verse that says, for the angels, people get like, what does that mean? And there's these elaborate explanations of, well, the angels have authority, and it's like there's angels on top of churches, and everyone has a guardian angel. What about the Russian, or the one we like grew up with? Which was? I mean, I don't know if this is 100% true, but from what I heard is like, because of the angels, because they're like the they're the fallen angels that slept with the the women. Yeah, you get, like, you get into the Nephilim and, it, and yeah. there's some kind of sexual desire for women. But that really breaks down because Paul, again, is only talking in the context of corporate worship. Yeah. And so... The, so you think you're t- when he talks about because of the angels, in that context, he's talking about the authority structure and how angels were... Or do you think it's like angels are a witness... I think I think I would go with that more of more of the fact that the angels are witnessing something unique when the church gathers to worship on the first day of the week. Mm-hmm. There is something unique and special yeah. about the corporate body gathering yeah. to worship Lord Jesus on a Sunday morning yeah. or you know on a Sunday I agree. because it was his day it was the day of the first of the week that where people gathered to the resurrection. So there's a unique aspect where the angels look upon that with awe recognizing that worship to God is going on throughout the entire world. That's like the basic principle that I can come up with being the tech, the text being so limited, right? There is also, you know, throwing out the very, another very strange idea about uh, head coverings and why um, it's necessary. Cause there's a lot of people who try to um, take away head coverings completely and make both men and women equal in this regard because they're egalitarians, meaning that they believe that women and men are interchangeable in worship. So, Women can preach, men can preach. Yeah, they, women, they have the same roles within the, the the structure of the church. Yeah, and then Michael Heiser has a really strange idea that women's hair functioned as a reproductive organ that allowed her to be more fertile the longer her hair was. And men... You're talking about like the Greek pagan culture yes. had that idea. The, even even the, the Greek medical culture had this idea that uh, hair was a symbolic or even a functional sexual organ that um, had to do with fertility and the absorption of um, just, you know, 
the bodily fluids and how all the, the reproductive system works. And so that's why men would have shorter hair and women would have longer hair because that meant they were more fertile. I don't think you can make the application here with Paul because Paul ha- doesn't say anything about sexual reproduction, any sexual immoral things, or even apply the principle. All he applies is the authority hierarchy that God created. Mm-hmm. And so um, the application of, well, okay, do you do you agree that it was a physical um, cloth covering in the time of Corinth or not? Yeah. So you think it was an actual physical covering in the time of Corinth, and so do I, right? Yeah. So the next question would be, does the actual practice of the head covering, physical head covering, apply, or just the principle, right? Is it prescriptive or descriptive? Not even that. Is is it is it is it the fact that when Paul says, "Hey, um, men are." The husband is the is the head of the wife, and God is the head of the husband. We all agree, yes, Christians today, that that principle applies, right? Well, most Christians who are complementarian, who believe in the general rules, as as Paul writes, we, we believe that, and especially in the Russian community, we believe that. The next step would be, hey, was it only cultural? Was the principle only for the Corinthians in regards to physically putting something on their head? And now in the modern culture today, we can do something different to show the same exact principle, right? And a lot of people would go with that because a head covering is such a physical representation. Like, you can see it, right? It's a clear distinction. Yeah. Hey, that is, in fact, a woman. That is, in fact, a man. And there is an authority structure there. And my argument would be that our our modern culture with head coverings is not that, is not that old, meaning that for the majority of church history, women covered their heads. Through the majority of church history. And especially in the Russian community, it's like, that is part of the culture, right? It's part of the deeply ingrained culture that women cover their heads. So if you are if you go to a Slavic community and you make, well, it was only for the Corinthians as a cultural representation. You live in a cultural representation where that is proper, Right? And so it would be improper for you to step outside of the culture and not cover your head. That'd be one argument. Um, and so the other argument was like, hey, even in the United States, there was a practice of covering your head in the churches. And then it started wavering in the 1920s because of feminist protesters going to churches and trying to protest the, you know, patriarchy. They didn't call it the patriarchy back then, but the inequality of gender roles by um, the protest was women removing their head covering, stating like we are equal to men now, right? So the question is, do you want to portray that kind of the feminist culture in your churches? Obviously not. Um, and we could kind of see that today with a lot of women nowadays cutting their hair very short. Um, I mean, it kind of you know this kind of rebellious attitude of like super short hair and uh i don't know what else not wanting to have kids thinking that they are equal to men in regards to you no know, i will work in this 50 50 percent partnership a lot of people even in the christian community refer to marriage as a partnership right like you do 50 percent of the work i do 50 percent of the work and we somehow raise this business structure and yeah, I think the deeper principle of this idea of head coverings for men and women, both men and women, um, the 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 more important thing is the actual view of the roles of men and women, and the view that Paul is trying to portray. Yeah, because ultimately, um, this is like a fourth or sixth degree issue, right? I was talking to you earlier today at church. Is like after after we all become after we all become gospel centered, reformed. You know, gospel would be number one. Number two would be reformed. Number three would be eschatology. Uh, number four would be like, hey, should we have real wine or ju- grape juice? Number five should be like, hey, you know, the church structure and the elder, you know, whether we have a eldership or we have one one you know person in the church structure. And then like fifth or sixth would be like, hey, should we cover heads, hair, you know, head coverings for men and women? Like once we figure all that as a global church, we'll, we can get to those issues. 
Yeah. But Paul writes about it in Corinthians 11, and it's a very deep issue in the, especially Slavic community. So that's an interesting conversation yeah, to have. Yeah, because I'll talk to American friends, right? We go to American church and ask them about this issue, and it's just some something they never, ever have to have thought of because they grow up their whole life never having to wonder if this was an actual cultural thing or a transcultural thing. And like, granted, no one really preaches on no those specific issues even if they do yeah. they kind of take a, a glimpse like a, a top glimpse of like oh this means that not a big yeah. deal no one really dives deep into a such a such a further back issue but the reason it's so significant in our community is because there's a literal clash between people who come from a culture where head coverings are such a significant sign of authority and into a culture where that's not even on the radar for a lot of Christian churches. Granted, there are Christian, even Reformed churches in the United States who um, strive to practice the head covering, and you know they view it as a sign uh, from God as a picture of authority, and they wear women wear yeah. head coverings. In it's Pentecostal churches, too. yeah, and a lot of Pentecostal churches do too. Um, but the the general milieu of like the culture in the United States, the, the non denominational churches, the um, newer Baptist churches, all the new age, what are they called? New age? Not the, 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 Some of them are new age, right? So the uh, emergent churches, the, the Calvary chapels, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say Calvary chapels emergent, I'm just saying <laughs> Calvary chapel as a whole, right? Yeah. They don't really practice head coverings. Assemblies of God. Assemblies of God, they don't really, you know. So so there is... Southern Baptist. Convention. And it's also a generational thing. The, the further you get away from like the 50, you know, the 20s, the 50s, like that disappears slowly. Yeah. Um, and so... But, but what about like how the culture is changing a lot with like a lot less women wearing skirts? Paul has nothing to say about skirts, does he? And that's actually an interesting topic you brought up because... Well, he talks about... The Bible does talk about like you shouldn't wear what a... A man what, would wear. Yeah. But... I don't think I don't think that dressing modestly in attire has anything to do with the application of head coverings. Meaning meaning I think Paul specifically addresses head coverings as a unique sign transculturally or con, you know throughout all cultures saying like even if all people are wearing pantsuits every single place of every single day to work to sleep to church to business meetings to weddings if your entire culture wears pantsuits men and women the distinction should be what moon should hit, wear coverings, head coverings during worship. That's I would it. Say, what if I'd say the distinction is like how people how people in that culture distinct men and women, like because in each culture there is always distinctions, mm -hmm. except of course, not in our culture anymore, and that's the that's problem what it we're seems into. Like, like we 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 have become an androgynous yeah. culture where, but but like. For example, like I said, like John Piper said, like obviously people, the majority of people today in America would still see like, right? They would even say like, all right, most women have longer hair. Most women wear lipstick. Most women, uh, you know, are good at cooking. Um, wait, yeah, not that yeah, one. Yeah, I think that those are very important feminine principles and things that like women should strive for according to God's order of creation. But, uh, you know, I almost feel like we're saying, well, my dad could have beat up your dad in a way where you, you can mention uh, John Piper or John MacArthur and I'll mention RC Sproul, right? Like which, which theologian is right, you know? Um, but I, I like RC Sproul's approach in the fact that when he says, when he discusses this issue, he says this, um, we clearly see that it's a principle in scripture that, there is an authority structure where women are submissive to men and men are submissive to God, and that's the hierarchy that God creates. Now, whenever there is a question about actual application and principle, the burden of proof always falls on the people who say we don't need to do something rather than the people who say we do need to do something. And it seems that Paul says we need to do it, and so the people who say we don't need to wear head coverings the actual burden of proof falls on them. And by mm -hmm. burden of proof, I think everyone should understand that they have to provide more and more evidence in order to prove their case rather than a neutral, rather it being a neutral case, the automatic cons uh, assumption should be head coverings are valuable as a 
um, sign of authority for women and men should not wear hats. Um, that's like the assumption that you should have. And then to disprove that assumption, you have to provide evidence. But there is literally no discussion of head coverings in the New Testament church anywhere other than Corinthians 11. And so what he would, R.C. Sproul said, um, I'm going to take the more reserved side in order to be cautious about the principle and try to worship God and honor God through that. And it again, it's not a primary issue. And so you can have discussions about that. And I think he said, he's like the only people who wear head covering in his church were like his wife and his daughters and everyone else kind of chose for themselves. It wasn't a, even uh, when Stephen Lawson was preaching about the topic, he mentioned the fact that he has his own questions. It's clear that there was a physical covering in Corinth but how it applies to our modern age, there are questions about. And so I think it's it's important to have that discussion. But to me, like we were talking about, like, you're like, are you convinced about this issue? I'm like, I'm convinced, but open to criticism. Um, and I think uh, it's difficult to overcome the burden of proof that Paul provides in Scripture for the dynamic that he places where men should not have their head covered during the participation in corporate worship on Sundays and women should as a sign of authority of men over them. Um, yeah. And again, uh, but do you think a big part of this reason is because you watched a six hour teaching on it? Yes. Mike Winger has a six hour uh, episode on YouTube discussing all of the, and Paul and Tom is kind of laughing at me, but I was, I was cleaning up my house, um, the construction site for like three hours when I had a day off last week. And then the next day at work, I just finished it. Yeah. So I had, I had, I have plenty of time to listen to these things. And I listened to, um, right, uh, response ministries, I listened to Stephen Lawson. I listened to a, um, some RC Sproul about it. So I kind of like, and I read, I read a couple of articles disagreeing with Mike Winger as well, but uh, they were very weak in regards to even even Mike Winger's approach. And Mike Winger actually came to a different conclusion than I did. We Very similar, but a different one. So if you guys are interested in learning more about this, uh, if you just go on YouTube uh, and you know search Mike Winger head coverings, he has a six-hour discussion of the every possible position, every possible position you could have. And he is quite good at being fair and honest and describing the positions. Yeah. And then toward the end, he kind of concludes himself. He's, and he's got like um, time marks where you can skip ahead to specific areas that you want to listen to. So um, what if someone came out with six hour teaching against his view? Would I, you be swayed? I, I, I'd, no, I'd be, I'd listen to it. But again, I don't, I don't hold the same position even Mike Winger holds. Mike Winger holds the position that it is allowable for for the cultures that had it as a ingrained principle like in Romania and Eastern Europe and Belarus and Ukraine and Russia uh, they should hold to that culture but where it was not is not ingrained in the culture like in the United States there should be a freedom in Christ not to do that but still apply the principle of uh, men submitting to God and women submitting to men in the regards of the hierarchy yeah. and authority during worship yeah, um, and and he he holds strongly to the complementarian position in regards yeah. to that. What do you think about like this is just a random like shower thought that I had is that what if you're in Ukraine and it gets really cold, and right then you're you're having service outside, and then the the men are wearing hats, and it's like it's it's too cold to remove your hats. What do you do then? So this is a nuance, <laughs> right? This is this is one of those how short can a women's hair be follicles yeah yeah and how how long can a man's hair be and it's like there's this general principle and the normative the, the normal application of Paul's teaching is this now if you were having worship service in Siberia like in one of the gulags during the soviet repressions and the potential of extermination for you know all the political prisoners yeah, I wouldn't want anybody standing in 50, 50, below 50 degree weather without their head covered with a hat, right? Like, there is there is room for nuance, especially this being a tertiary or further on issue. Yeah. But the normative principle, the, the principle of normal practice should apply in regards to yeah. what we view, right? I think that's the best way to approach it. Um, and again, 
I'm I'm pretty sure about this position. Um, but again, open to uh, criticism and discussion. It's, it's really interesting that like for the most part through the years we've come to the like almost the same conclusions with our theology. And well, right now we disagree. Yeah, which is pretty rare. Well, yeah, I mean I, like I could only think this and maybe maybe this and like was tongues an actual is it an actual angelic language or not? Like we kind of disagree on that. Yeah. Um but even I'm I'm kind of like iffy on that. Like it might be Well, I think yeah, the longer the longer and more you read scripture, the more you kind of have questions about. And this is definitely a question riddled issue, question riddled issue. But I, I think a, a big application of um, this specific issue has, ha, forget the head coverings for a second. Yeah. Imagine the broader understanding of women's roles. I mean, if you look at our, our Slavic community, we do have an issue with, People going to um, you know university, women get married to men, and they have like three dogs, and they've been married for ten years, right? It's like God created a family unit to procreate and create children, and minus the fact that you have you know health issues and and things like that, if you're just choosing not to have kids and you think that's not part of God's created order, there's something wrong there, or that you think that you can be a, a pastor as a woman. Yeah. There's something wrong there. That's not according to God's authority, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of the more important principle. I think what happens is uh, whatever view you have on this head covering, the issue is in Russian Slavic churches, uh, people see the abuse of the women and men relationships. And instead of having a biblical view of it, right, of submitting, yes, the woman submitting to the man, to the husband, but then the the man treating, uh, loving the wife as Christ has loved us. And laid his life for her. Yeah. yeah. You're literally, you have, there is such an, a, a responsibility and accountability that men have now because they are in this headship role. And that we don't, I don't think... Unfortunately, a lot of Slavic churches teach what's the healthy way of doing that because we see a lot of abuses and then the pendulum swing the other way to where a lot of uh, Slavic brothers and sisters, now they think that uh, that women, it's okay for women to be pastors. It's okay for women to be able to preach on Sunday uh, over the authority of men. Yeah, and also uh, the head curbings thing um, gets taken very far as well where it's like, Mm. You can't leave the house without your head covered. You can't pray by yourself without your head covered. If you have a group setting, you must have your head covered. And if you don't, it's a significant sin where you have church discipline involved. Um, right? Yeah, like, unfortunately, a lot of... Uh, right, we talked about this. This is like a secondary issue, or a fourth even issue. Like, once you get done with all the issues, right? Yeah. When, when, when the entire world becomes uh, Christian... Reformed Calvinistic, amillennial, and have ser- serve wine on Sundays, every Sunday, f- or once a month on Sunday for the communion, then we can get to this issue. <laughs> if they do. If they do, right? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it, it's that but, kind of... Yeah, and the thing is that this needs to be shown as a secondary issue in a lot of Slavic churches, unfortunately. This is the thing that we heard preach about maybe too much. And it was made too much emphasis on it instead of you focus on the gospel, you focus on who God is. And the principle behind the head covering as well. And if you focus more on who God is and who man and women are in the relationship to God and the proper way of relating to God, then you'll have a lot less issues with abuses. Yeah, I think that's very true. Because abuses tend to make people very um, bitter or very... Um, hesitance to follow up with things that are attached to the abuses, right? So yeah. if you were forced to wear a head covering your entire life, anywhere you went as a Christian, and then you read the scriptures and you joined a healthy church, you're going to be very, very, um, you have a lot of disdain for that particular thing because that was the abuse. Yeah, and that's the fortunate thing. Um, and whatever has happened to you or to us, let's take it to God and let's 
let's see what of our issues through our you know our experiences like if someone had a a poor father figure in their life they might view the father as you know some kind of extrapolation from their earthly father yeah instead of under looking at no the problem was the the, the father you had was not representing what who the father actually is that's very true yeah well um i hope you guys enjoyed or <laughs> learn something about head care rings if you want more information i would recommend the six hour uh, lesson that mike winger has because he dives into every possible um you know position on this and he has time stamps if you're interested in knowing more Read over, read over Corinthians eleven again. Yeah, um, you know. Seems seems like Corinthians has a lot of controversial things like spiritual gifts, head coverings. We're really thankful that it's in the in in the Gospels, right? Or in the yeah. New Testament. I think yeah, um, I think that's something people in the United States, especially in the Slavic community, are gonna keep on having to discuss. 